Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, this is part 36. Machining the rear cylinder cover, plus drilling and reaming the hole in the centre for the gland packing material. Once the main video starts, you will be watching heavily edited extracts from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine, which is a Patreon-only project. The full-length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. There are some other benefits of being a patron of my channel. You get to download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. This compilation video trailer has been made using heavily edited clips from How to Build a Model Steam Engine Part 19. This is the front cylinder cover and I need to make this thick register on the back a good bit thinner than it is, and drill the holes around the outer edge. This is the rear cylinder casting, and as you can see, it's considerably different from the front one. I'll be drilling a hole part of the way through the front of this casting to form the gland stuffing box. This is the inside part of the cylinder cover, and as you can see, it has a protrusion on it. The purpose of this being to make the machining easier. There are a few different ways and different opinions on how to machine a casting like this, but I would normally start it off in a four-jaw chuck, and the casting's being gripped in the chuck by the stuffing box. The first part of the job is possibly the fiddliest. I have to make it run as concentrically as possible before I start to machine it. There is some tolerance. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but the hole in the stuffing box needs to be exactly in the centre, so take your time if you're doing this job and don't rush it. It's most important to make sure that the protrusion that sticks out of the rear of the cylinder cover runs, well, more or less concentrically. What I normally do is put a lathe tool quite close to the work and then as I rotate the chuck by hand I can see which part of the casting is closest to the tool. Then I adjust the position of the chuck jaws accordingly to move it away from the tool and eventually by a process of elimination by eliminating the gaps that is, the main part of the casting starts to run true. For the next part of the job I need to get the centre part to run concentrically as well as the outside diameter. The way I would normally do this is to tap the casting very gently with a soft hammer whilst it's spinning in the lathe. And after a while the whole casting, which is quite irregular to start with, is running concentrically enough to allow me to machine it. But the first part of the job is the most important I'm facing across the front. That's because I'm about to use a centre drill to make a centre hole in the part, so then I can use a live centre to support the outer part of the casting, so it doesn't jump out of the chuck when I start machining the rest of it. In this clip with the lathe running slowly, you can see how out of round it really is, but it's not a big problem. There's quite a lot of tolerance on this component. The diameter of the casting is much bigger than it needs to be, and I'm not complaining about that because it's a good thing. The casting central register is about an inch and an eighth, I think, by looking at it. And this part will need turning down to one inch in diameter to fit just inside the edge of the cylinder. In the home workshop, it's never a good idea to machine cast iron too fast. This is a digital caliper, and when I try it in the inside edge of the cylinder bore, it's reading one inch exactly, which is a good thing. It's back over to the lathe now to turn this inner register to exactly the same as what's on the digital caliper, one inch diameter. Or oh, 1000 thou, if you want to work it that way. The caliper reading tells me that I have to remove quite a bit more yet. In no time at all, the register was turned down to one inch, so now it's time to turn my attentions to the outer diameter of the cylinder cover. But first of all, I need to make sure it matches the one I've done already. I use the front cylinder cover to set the position of the caliper and all I have to do now is turn down the outer diameter to the same diameter as the front cylinder cover. One more cut should do it and yes it looks okay. In this clip I'm reducing the thickness of the register. There needs to be room for a gasket and very little else. It just needs to pop inside the cylinder, not take up too much space where it would foul the piston. It's a good idea to make sure that the final cut is the finest cut, that way you will get a good finish on the work. This next part of the job is important, I'm just using some wet or dry sandpaper to remove the sharp edges. At this stage I can remove the casting from the four jaw chuck and then carefully take off the four jaw chuck. You will notice that I use two hands to support it 
so when it falls off the register, it doesn't plummet onto the bed and damage it. I'm holding the casting in the three-jaw chuck by the protrusion that stuck out of the rear of the casting in the first place, the one that you've just seen me machine. The rear part of this casting is running very true. The front part isn't because that's unmachined. The best way to approach this side of the machining job is to take a light facing cut across the front, then centre drill the front part, then drill all the way through with an 11 64th drill, which is one imperial size under 3 16ths of an inch. Then I would use a 3 16ths of an inch reamer to get a really good finish in the hole for the piston rod. At the moment I'm concentrating on the machining operation and this one you need to be careful with for a couple of reasons. One being that the casting is only held in the chuck by that extension piece so shallow cuts are the order of the day and the other reason is you don't want to go too far towards the stuffing box and hit that. Here's the reaming operation. I'm very carefully feeding in a 3 16ths of an inch diameter reamer. This video is running in real time and the lathe is in back gear so the chuck is going slowly. And as you can see the reamer has removed quite a lot of material. I'll take this opportunity to clean the work and the reamer. And now it's top tip time. The next part of the operation involves carefully drilling a 5 16ths of an inch diameter hole for a distance of 5 16ths of an inch down into the stuffing box to take the gland material. There are different ways to do this, I find this to be the simplest. I could line up the drill and then read the graduations on the tailstock quill but these days I can't even see that. So I use a silicone rubber collar which tells me when to stop. The time has come to part off the finished cylinder cover and this is better carried out at slow speed. In this clip I'm using a piece of emery cloth to remove the burr where the parting tool broke through. And that's it, the part is finished and it fits in the cylinder and it fits in the cylinder very well. No trick photography here, it just is a good fit in the cylinder. Put it in the cylinder and then I can hold it upside down and it doesn't fall out. Having said that, it doesn't need to be this good a fit. The front cylinder cover is also a good fit, but not quite as good as the rear cover. In the next episode, I'll show a couple of ways to drill the holes in the cylinder covers. And once that's done, I can transfer the positions onto the cylinder and drill and tap the holes. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.